name is Lauren and I head up Genetic Sessions. We are so excited to be with you this week for Summer School. We have so much in store for you. Please do make sure you check out our channel where you will find video tutorials on things like beatboxing, to beat making, guitar workshops, drum workshops and much, much more. We also have a talent competition happening this week where you could win a £20 Nando's card. All you've got to do is film yourself showing us your talent and send it to the Genetic Sessions Instagram page and you could be enjoying some yummy, yummy chicken. So we hope that you really enjoy your session. Afternoon guys, this is Adam from Genetic Sessions. Hopefully you've been enjoying what's been happening with summer school so far. Um, this is rare and it is the first year of summer school where actually if you wanted to you could take part in every single thing we've got going on. So keep an eye on the genetic sessions, uh, YouTube there's going to be loads of different classes going on. I know we've got beat making, beatboxing, guitar, drums, street dance, stuff like that going on so do make sure you check it out. Hopefully you guys have also been checking out what B-Boy Benji's been doing with uh, the breakdown sessions so far. I know he's been doing some, uh, some more basic fundamental stuff as well. He is an absolutely class guy. He's part of our Genetic Sessions South Africa team. So make sure you check that out if you haven't already. Um, today, I'm gonna to be looking at some slightly more complicated stuff. I'm gonna teach you guys a bit of a solo that I've been working on and maybe a bit of a concept of how to do things, say one footed or something like that. Um, but we're gonna start off by doing a little bit of a warm up. So I'm gonna stick five minutes on the clock and then let's get cranking. Okay, so we're gonna get started on a nice, gentle warm-up. Got five minutes on the clock. We're just gonna start off with 20 star jumps, so let's go. Okay. 20 of those down, let's have a 10 second breather and then we're going to next get into doing some burpees. Now I know burpees are horrible, the more you do them the easier they get. So let's crack on, we're only going to do a set of 10, but let's get going. Okay, so set of 10 burpees done. Let's have a sort of 20 second breather and then we're going to get into doing some inchworms. Now, inchworms are a bit of a weird one, so we're going to do three different levels depending on how you're feeling, how stretched out you are, what you can manage. The easiest one, you're going to start in a press position with your toes on the floor and your heels in the air. You're just going to walk your hands backwards until your heels hit the floor. And then you're going to go back forwards again. So that's a nice easy inch one. If you want to do the next level up, slightly more difficult, instead of stopping your hands when your heels hit the floor, you're going to keep your hands going until you're nearly touching your toes. And then walk back forwards again. And the last one, the most difficult lot, these, you're going to start up here. What you're going to do, jump your hands forwards, jump your feet forwards, jump your feet backwards, jump your hands backwards. It's quite difficult, it's quite intensive. Do whatever you feel able to do. We're just going to quickly bust out a set of 10 of those. So here goes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Don't know about you, I'm definitely warming up now. Okay, so next step, we've still got a couple of minutes left on the clock. We're gonna have a bit of a breather, and then in about 15 seconds, we're gonna do a set of press ups. Personally, I'm gonna aim for 25. You do 10, 20, whatever you feel able to do. What you can do if you're really struggling to do press ups, do them with your knees on the floor, so like that. 
Ideally, if you're a little bit more experienced, you want your feet and hands on the floor, arms about shoulder width apart, and you're trying to go all the way down. So let's get going. Okay, the key thing with those is to remember to keep breathing, don't hold your breath, it makes it harder. If you want an extra bit of power and you're struggling, nice strong exhale on the push up, give you that extra bit of strength to get through. Okay, we've got about a minute left, so we're gonna have another little rest to make sure that we're not overdoing it. Wait for me to get my breath back, because I don't know about you guys, but I've been uh, getting much less exercise during lockdown, so I'm, I'm feeling this warm up a little bit more than I normally would. But in about 10 seconds, we're going to get going with some sit-ups or crunches. So, entirely up to you if you just want to do normal sit-ups. Feet on the floor, fingers behind your ears. Straight up. Personally, I'm going to go for crunches. So, feet off the floor, shoulders right the way back, and then just in. Okay? So, set of those. Again, I'm going to aim for 25, you do 10, 20, whatever you feel comfortable with. Let's go. There we go, and that's five minutes. Brilliant, so that's the warm up done. Let's do a little bit of stretching just to make sure we're ready and we don't injure ourselves. So first thing I'm gonna do, feet wide apart, just straight over to the side. Do that for a little bit of time, and then change side. Hopefully you'll feel this down the side. It's fairly normal for you to not feel some of these stretches because that just means that the muscle group might already be stretched out enough. You might also feel it in your legs, that's absolutely fine. So once you've done that, fingers interlocked, arms out in front, straight out to the side, try and keep your back flat. There we go, and the same the other side. Now again, these, you might want to hold them for a little bit longer. I'm kind of blitzing through them partly because I'm aware of time, but also because I'm also aware that I've only got so much storage for this video. So, if you do want to do these for longer, you go for it. Okay, once you've done those, arms up to the side, you're going to do L, uh, ear to the knee. So what you want to do, try and get one hand on your ankle, perhaps get the other arm behind and grab hold of that elbow. Try and avoid pulling your knee in too far, but you do want to try and get your ear to your knee as far as you can. What you don't want to do is end up in a sort of side squat. You want your legs to both be straight. Okay, let's change sides. Now again, this is something that you'll feel in certain muscle groups more than others. I tend to feel it in my left hamstring and my right calf more than anything else because those two muscles are muscles that I naturally have that are tight. You might notice different things about your body while you're doing these stretches. Make sure you take extra time to look after those, listen to your body and don't hurt yourself. Once you've done those, you can try and put your hands together on the floor and just tilt your head under. So you want to be able to get as low down as you can. Again, try and keep your back straight. You don't want to be arching too much. Okay, once you've done that, bring your feet together, we're going to do some quad stretching. So stand on one leg, hold your foot. If you're finding it hard to balance, you can stick your arm out to the side or you can just grab hold of your ear. What you'll find is that one of your legs is absolutely brilliant for balancing and the other one's probably a little bit shakier. For me, my right leg's the shaky leg, so when I change sides, I find it a lot easier to balance here. What you can do if you want to is use both feet, uh, both hands on your foot. That could just intensify the stretch a bit. Try and keep your knees together. You'll find that you feel it a lot more if you do that. Okay, arms next. So, arm across the chest. You should feel this across the back of your shoulder. You might need to 
a range where you're doing your arm a little bit to get different results, but it's also all right if you don't feel the stretch very much. I don't tend to feel it that much because my shoulder muscles are quite loose on this side. Shoulders. Once we've done shoulders, we're going to go over the back. So hand between your shoulder blades. You're going to press down on the with uh, on the elbow with the other hand. So all that's going to do is that is going to stretch out your tricep. Okay. Roll the hands together, and then arm out in front. One hand on top of the other, pull down this will be your wrists. Again, don't forget, I'm rushing through these because I've only got so much storage on the uh, on the camera. However, you feel free to take your time. If you want to do these stretches for a minute at a time, go for it. If that's what it takes to get your body feeling stretched out, that's exactly the right thing to do. Make sure that you're not hurting yourself. Um, next one, arm out in front. Hand bent in front of you, other hand over the top, just put a bit of pressure on that. This will do the back of your wrists the same way that we've just done the front of your wrists. So make sure you're doing both sides of those. Again, don't force it, but make sure you're stretching everything out. Uh, what else have we still got to do? We still need to do neck. So head over to the side, just pull it gently over, do both sides. And if there's anything else that you can think of that you know that you need to stretch, do make sure that you stretch it out. So for me, personally, one of the ones that I like doing is extra hamstring stretches. So leg out in front, hand on the toe, pull it towards you, try and keep your legs straight as you can. That really helps me. Um, anything else you need to stretch out, go for it. Feel free to press pause. We'll see you in a second for the main bit of the lesson. Okay guys, so hopefully you've had a bit of a drink, had a bit of a breather, done a bit of stretch here. If you're not entirely sure what you're aiming for, I'm sure some of the other workouts that um, B-Boy Benji's put on will have some good stretches. But things like just making sure your shoulders are loose by pulling your arm across your chest. Um, if you've got tight hamstrings, sit down, try and grab your foot with a straight leg, things like that. There's loads of exercises to do. Um, to be honest, warming up is slightly less important than warming down, so I'm gonna make sure I go through some of these at the end anyway. But we're gonna crack on with doing a 4-8 solo that I've been working on. So if, if you've done dance before, you know that um, we tend to work in sort of blocks of eight beats at a time. So that's what this is, this is four blocks of eight. So we're gonna start nice and easy with what's called a Latin step. Now we're starting by kicking with our left foot. So kick together, out, kick together, out, the next move is a little bit different because it's a variation on Indian step, which is one where you go kick, leg out in front and hop over. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna spin right the way through. So once we've gone kick together, out, together, out, we're gonna go kick, over, spin round, and land like that. It's a little bit hard to get your balance at first, but once you've practiced it, you'll be able to. You've got four beats to do that move, so don't rush it too much. Once you've done that, the next thing you're going to do from here is you're going to go into a little bit of a sort of sideways worm move. So you're going to roll down onto your knee and onto your hands and then kick your hips up into essentially a high freeze. So it's going to look a little bit like this. Okay, once you've done that, the next move is a rotational kick. So what's gonna happen is your left foot is gonna come down, hit the floor about here. Your right foot is gonna arch right the way over the top and you're gonna end up, well, I'm gonna end up with my back to the camera, sitting on my bum in a broken split. So it'll look a little bit like this. Okay, I'm gonna turn around so that you guys can see what happens next. So I've just done that kick. I've landed here like this. Now the next move, all you're doing is Keeping that foot in front, you're going to push up on your hands so that your bum's off the floor and then that foot is going to come back through and you're just going to pivot over. That puts you in a perfect position to do the wind up for swipes. But what you're going to do instead of doing a full swipe is you're going to hop over into a freeze on the other side. Okay, nice and easy. You're going to hold that foot about a beat 
then you're going to tuck in, then you're going to go for flight free, so legs straight out, then back in, and then you're going to come down. Now when you come down, your right leg is then going to sweep round so that we're facing back at the camera again. So you're going to do a little bit of a hop to change legs. Your right leg is going to sweep and you're going to land here. You're then going to do a hop, then a hop back, and then you're going to do a jump through and land with both legs flat on the floor. I'm a little bit close to the camera again, so I'll move back. So you want to land in this position here. What's then going to happen is you're going to do Toronto blenders. Now, Toronto blenders are a slightly odd move to get used to. What you're basically doing is lifting your bum off the floor, sweeping one leg under the other, and bringing that foot back so you're essentially sitting on the foot. When that foot is at the back, your other leg is going to start the same move, while the first leg swings out and goes back to where it was. So we're going to do one of those. When the left foot comes around again, your right foot should be somewhere near the middle. What you're going to do then is instead of finishing the blender, you're going to push up on your right hand and put your weight onto your left and go into what we sessions have been calling a dead leg. So you want to start in this position, same sort of position you were in for your freeze at the beginning. Your left leg is going to come around, come around and hook under your knee. Your right knee is going to pivot over. So you've got your left toe and right knee on the floor. And then you're going to turn your hips back out so that your right leg comes back around and then extend your right leg. And then all we're going to do is step over and zip up. So that's four eights. It feels quite long, there's quite a lot in there, but I'm going to break it down into those component eights. So your first eight is one and two, three and four, five and six, seven, eight. Your second eight, starting from here, is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Your third eight, once you've done that, starting from that baby freeze position, is one, two, and three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Fourth eight is one, two, three, four, five, and six, seven, eight. Really simple. Follow all that and you've got a nice solo. It will take you a bit of practice to get used to it. I keep stumbling over the Toronto Blenders bit every time I do it at the moment, so I'm going to keep working on it, but eventually it should look pretty good. Cool. Have another breather, grab another drink of water, let's move on to the next thing. Okay guys, I've been grabbing a quick drink. Um, so, hopefully you guys are enjoying what's going on with sessions. Um, hopefully you've been enjoying this one so far. Have fun playing about with that routine. Feel free to add bits to it, change it up a little bit, whatever you want to do. I've just given you a basic framework there. Um, so, I'm sure you'll probably know, especially if you've been coming to sessions with any kind of regularity, um, that actually one of the things that makes sessions a little bit different from maybe other, other um, groups that you might go to is that everybody who works for sessions is actually a Christian, which means that every single one of the tutors here have decided that following Jesus was a really important thing to do. And maybe that's something that you're interested in. I know for me, that was the biggest decision I've made in my life. It's certainly the best one I've ever made. Um, but if you want to know more about that, actually check out the Genetic Sessions YouTube page at five o'clock on a Wednesday, because there's this thing called the Higher Sessions, where um, a bunch of the guys from the different bands that we've got here at The Message who work with sessions, so guys like Solbox, Brightline, OTC, um, Amongst Wolves, all those guys are doing different sessions looking at the impact that their faiths had on their lives and things like that. So do check that out. Don't forget, you've also got loads of other stuff that those bands are doing on our social media as well. So do please check that out as well and feel free to get involved and keep in touch with us through there. Um, yeah, so sweet. 
Right, next thing, we've done a bit of a routine. Next thing to do is to have a look at a bit of a concept. So let's say you wanted to do a routine with only one foot on the floor for as much of it as you can manage. Obviously it's a little bit difficult initially. Top rocks with only one foot on the floor. You tend to do a lot of changing, so it'd be things like that, where you only got one foot on the floor at a time, but it's hard to make it look really, really solid. So have a play about with that. There's no right or wrong answers, but the trick is to try and make it look as though one foot is obviously off the floor at a time. The next challenge, once you've done a bit of top rock, figured out what shapes you want to do, is how do you get down? So I was thinking about this, and one of the main ways that I figured out was going into an Indian step, so my old favorite, so kick over like that, and normally you're hopping from one foot to the other. So I thought, well, how do I use that as a go down? Really simple, all you do is when you've done the kick and switched over, you bend your knee, put your hands on the floor, and then you're in a perfect position. But the challenge is, how do you keep it smooth? What I basically discovered was that going into it, as long as you keep your balance and you throw your weight over fast enough, you can turn it into quite a nifty little get down. So it should look a little bit like this. So it's all about fast movements with the hands. And you're basically doing a tiny cartwheel with your hands. You should be able to end up with one foot sticking out. Really simple. So what do you do once you've got there? Well, for me, the next move it made sense to do was a little sort of half capoeira kick thing. So my right foot's gonna come over, it's gonna do a sharp, short, sharp little kick, and I'm gonna be facing the other way. So it'll look a little bit like this. Now you may have noticed I've just changed feet when I did that, because I'm only keeping one foot on the floor. But I've now got the wrong foot in the air, so change over, back to the other foot. Next thing I wanted to do was something that showed that I can keep that foot off the floor. So I'm gonna hop over, and then hop back, and then hop over again, and then the next move, I'm gonna actually engage like this off the floor. So I'm gonna sweep round, and then sweep round with the other leg, and come through. So now it's my right foot that's off the floor. So if you do that move smoothly enough, what you end up with, so starting from this position here, is this. Okay, so it's quite a fast move, but you end up sitting the other way around. What I then wanted to do is rather than just keep that foot off the floor, decided I wanted to do a bit of threading in this. So if you want to do a thread, keep one foot off the floor, makes sense to put the other leg underneath, grab the toe, and then thread. So now that foot's on top, isn't it? So I might as well put the other foot down because that one's off the floor. And then I thought it might make sense to change foot. So grab your other foot and then you're gonna bend one knee and straighten the other one out. So you just change legs, you've just done a double thread. Keeping hold of that foot, what I'm now gonna do is sweep both my legs around in a similar move to what I did to get from that side. So again, rolling around onto my tummy, threading around, but this time as I come to the front, it's the left foot that's off the floor. Right foot's gonna do a hop over, and I'm gonna use that as the get up. So I'm gonna hop over and basically stand up and spin around. So it should look a little bit like this. And then, you put your foot down. So there you go. That is a really sort of basic concept. The idea of this is not for me to give you all the routine. So have a play about. Figure out what you can do with only one foot on the floor. Maybe it's that you want to have a go at three step. So three step, normally maybe you'd be foot out, both feet, other foot out at the front, and then change around. It's a rotational move, so you won't generally end up facing the same way. But perhaps you want to change that up and do it one legged. So actually maybe for you, a one legged three step could look a little bit like this. I'm going to try and keep my left foot off the floor all the way around. Maybe that's what a one-legged three-step looks like for you. Have a play. 
you guys hopefully know a bunch of different steps. If you don't, do check out the stuff that B-Boy Benji's been doing. I'm sure he'll have taught you some new stuff. But have a play. All you need to do to make a concept routine is figure out the concept you want to use. So maybe it's foot off the floor. Maybe it's a hand off the floor. Maybe it's keeping your head on the floor all the way around your moves. Figure out the one thing that you want to link all your moves together and just have fun. There's no real limits to what you can do. Breaking is all about figuring out how to use your body and getting the best out of it. So have fun. For me, that looks like playing about with one foot. For you, that could look like absolutely anything. I know that some of the guys that attend regularly for things like summer school, they're crazy talented guys who can do flips and things like that. So maybe you want to have a play with how do you vary flips? How do you get flips into different moves? It's entirely up to you. There's loads of stuff you can do. So have fun, enjoy, experiment. Feel free to press pause and then just have a play. Okay, so we've done quite a lot in this session. So we're gonna do a bit of a gentle warm down. So we'll start by just gently jogging on the spot. This keeps the blood flowing, but it also helps to pump all that lactic acid and things away from your muscles so that your body can start to get back to normal. Okay, so run on the spot for a little bit longer. And then all we're gonna do is some nice gentle moves. So let's start feet apart. And you're gonna do big sort of drooping moves. And loosen up everything across your arms and your shoulders and stuff like that. Again, don't force these, just nice and gentle. Keeps the body moving, keeps everything flowing, and it should help with some of those aches and pains afterwards. Okay, another one that's nice and useful. This is basically just a warm up in reverse. So if you wanted to revisit this session, you want to swap them around so that you're doing this as a warm up, you probably could do that. It's a little bit more gentle, certainly not as intense, but it probably won't warm you up as much either. Um, so don't forget, you're going to need to do some stretching after this anyway because this is a warm down, but you're still going to have things that maybe need stretching, so do do that as well. But it's just some nice gentle exercises to get your body used to a slightly more normal level of physical activity. Instead of feeling like you're stressing yourself out and stretching yourself, let's just roll the shoulders forwards. Get rid of some of that tension that things like swipe setups and freezes and whatnot can put through your shoulders. Just go back the other way. Make sure everything's working nice and loose. This is just generally good stuff that you can be doing day to day if you're feeling like you're uh, you're a little bit stiff from sitting down more often because you can't get out as much during lockdown as well. So just a little activity like this just to make sure that your body's still moving, that it's still working all right. There we go. And finish off with some nice gentle foot kickers. Make sure that everything's still working through there. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed the session. Hopefully it's been fun. Um, I don't know how it's going to compare to the other sessions because obviously we're all having work in isolation. But do please keep in contact. Please check out the Genetic Sessions YouTube. We've got stuff that's getting uploaded all the time. Check out the bands. Check out what they're doing. Check out what B-Boy Benji's been doing with the other sessions. Have fun. And yeah, hope you guys have had a good summer in spite of the weirdness of COVID-19. And yeah, look forward to seeing you guys when we're actually allowed to be in a dance studio together again. See you guys soon. We really hope that you enjoyed your session with us today and are feeling like a pro. Please do make sure you send in your videos for the talent competition as well. If you've enjoyed this session and you want to find out more about the Christian faith, then you can join your tutors on a Wednesday for Higher Life. Check this out. What's up everyone, Sammy from Soulbox. Come and hang out with me and my friends every Wednesday, 5 p.m. to explore the Christian faith. See you guys there.